While I was developing a website for a tutorial, my design for the About section consisted of three cards positioned at the end of a div, but centered within the card container. Now, I need to think of a way to overlap the two divs without disrupting the layout, so here's when the position property comes in handy. But what is the position property exactly? The position property in CSS is used to control the positioning of an element on a web page. It basically tells the browser how to place the element relative to its normal position in the document flow or relative to its parent element. There are several values for the position property, static, relative, absolute, fixed, and sticky. Let's first learn about static. Static is simply the default value. Elements are positioned according to the normal flow of the document. Simply put, when you write a div, heading one, or paragraph, it already has the position of static since it is its default value. It's simple as that. Next is the relative position value. Relative position moves the element relative to its normal position. It allows you to adjust the element's position using properties like top, right, bottom, and left without affecting the layout of other elements on the page. For example, imagine you have a web page with a main content area. And within that area, you want to position a small notification bubble next to a specific piece of text. However, you want the notification bubble to be slightly offset from its normal position. You simply make it a position, relative. Then use the right property since the notification is aligned to the right. Then move it 15 pixels to the right. Up next is absolute positioning. Absolute positioning removes the element from the normal document flow and positions it relative to its nearest positioned ancestor. If no ancestor is positioned, it's positioned relative to the initial containing block, which is usually the viewport. For example, when you want to create a scroll to the top button and place it at the bottom right of the website without interfering with other HTML elements, you simply make its position absolute. Since it doesn't have any nearest positioned ancestor, which we'll discuss more later, it will be positioned relative to the viewport. After making it absolute, you can use the offset properties like bottom, zero, to place it at the bottom and right, zero, to position it at the right. To create some space between the button and the edge of the viewport, just add a margin, 24 pixels. Earlier we talked about how absolute positioning is determined by its nearest positioned ancestor. It means we can use position, relative and position, absolute together. For example, let's say you're creating a website with profile cards, each containing a profile picture, user information, and a follow button. You want the follow button to always appear in the bottom right corner of each card. In this scenario, if you make the follow button position absolute, it will be positioned relative to the viewport since it's the nearest position ancestor. However, if you use position relative on the profile card, it will become its nearest positioned ancestor. Now you can simply use the offset property bottom, zero, to easily position it at the bottom. To understand the relationship between relative and absolute positioning better, let's imagine a big 2D box with the position relative property. Inside this big box is a white box positioned absolute. In this situation, we can easily use the offset properties inside this big 2D box because the white box is contained within its nearest relative ancestor. It's simple as that. And now that we're done with relative and absolute positioning, let's move on to a position property called fixed. What is the fixed position property? Similar to absolute positioning, but the element is positioned relative to the viewport. So it stays fixed in place even when the page is scrolled. So it's like an absolute position property without any concern if it's within any nearby relative ancestor. Its nearest relative ancestor is the viewport. For example, imagine you want to create a navigation bar that sticks to the top of the page even when the user scrolls down. By setting its position to fixed, the navigation bar remains fixed at the top of the viewport, providing easy access to navigation links as the user scrolls through the content. Using the term fixed literally means it is affixed to the viewport. Other examples of using the fixed position property include cookie consent banners you see every time, music player controls that remain visible while the music plays like on SoundCloud, and modal or dialog boxes that overlay content and remain fixed in the viewport, providing focused interaction. The possibilities are endless. Lastly, let's discuss the sticky position property. Position, sticky acts as a hybrid between position relative and position fixed. When you set an element's position to sticky, it behaves as relatively positioned until it reaches a certain point on the screen. 
defined by top, bottom, left, or right values. And then its sticks becomes fixed at that point as the user scrolls. For example, one of the useful cases of a sticky position is when you've created a table on your website and you want the headers to stick to the top of the viewport or the top of the table as users scroll through the data. You can easily achieve this by making the table header sticky and using the offset property of top. And of course, I know everything we've discussed is a lot to take in. That's why I've created a PDF that includes everything we talked about. It's free, but we would appreciate your support for the channel. If you're eager to enhance your CSS skills, why not give our videos a try? You might just learn a thing or two. We cover topics such as website layouts, scroll reveal, GSAP, responsive design, and more. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Comment down below what you would want to learn next, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. If you need a custom website, you can email us in novadesigns.creative at gmail.com.